this is just a big blap of oil um, that's just been sitting on top of here, on top of these sandbars for the past uh, eight weeks. So eight weeks ago is when this all washed in? Yeah, eight weeks is when we had uh, the most of it kind of just accumulate in this area and it was just like a standing pool um, on the swash zone, just kind of sitting there. And it just kind of started sinking over the past couple of weeks and it just kind of um, accumulated over the top of these sandbars. And has there been any cleanup here at all? There's, there was cleanup, superficial cleanup, just in our tidal pool areas and um, on, on our beaches but we didn't want any heavy machinery back here since it is the last wild beach in Grand Isle uh, to cut up the beach and the vegetation. So there hasn't been an effort to clean up this. We've been trying to get volunteers with shovels to be able to come out here, but then we have to worry about um, the Oshawa and Hazmat training in order for them to do that. Um, well, we have uh, hundreds of volunteers who've been calling the park who want to help. And uh, I think it would be fine for them to come out with boots, masks, and gloves and just be able to shovel this off the surface and get it out of here. Um, when the water recedes all the way at low tide, I mean, it covers this whole area. But that's what I would like to see. Instead of them bringing big machinery back here and cutting up, the, you know, the sand and the vegetation, scooping it off, I think just people with shovels, you know, and there's definitely an effort. There's hundreds of people who want to do it. Right. But it seems like it's at an impasse and it's just not going to happen. Um, there's a lot of red tape. Yeah. Are uh, you hopeful? I am. I'm hopeful. <laughs> I'm trying but, I mean, to... here you are, how many weeks later? Eight weeks? Yeah, over eight weeks. And there hasn't been any, weeks, any cleanup really. right here where you're standing. Right, right. There's, um, there's actually pockets. I'll show you later. If you dig in certain areas, you can actually put your hand almost three feet under the ground and pull up oil pockets that are down here in the water. If you actually stand here for a while, you start to sink into it. One of my volunteers, we, uh, we was up to her knees and we had to pull her out. And we pulled her out, she had oil all down her leg. No kidding. Yeah. How difficult is it to get off? Very, very really? difficult. Right. Yeah. And so what are you doing in terms of these, these hermit crabs, if you want to describe that? Um, well, we come out here um, during low tide, and you can see they're all on top of this oil. So it's really getting in and on top of their shells. Um, so we like to collect them from this area, take them up, clean them, and then relocate them at about 20 miles north in less impacted areas. We've cleaned and re relocated 30, over 3,500 hermit crabs that survived. And how much longer are you going to continue to do this? I'm going to keep on doing it until they clean up the oil and until oil stops washing up on our shores. Well, it's been really great getting volunteers out here. Right. I started off with just one tank that my mom bought me, one filter, you yeah. know, and just my couple of friends that were helping me do it. And it's grown to be over 100 volunteers, over 3,500 hermit crabs saved. So it's defi definitely rewarding to bring people out here and for people to be able to see this, make a connection to the environment, to the animals that they're saving, and it gives them some perspective of what choices they want to make in their lives in order to keep on going down this route or if they want to change, be part of the change. Right. Have you gotten any resistance along the way from when you first started to do this, whether it's from BP or state or federal officials or? Um, yeah, I got that for coming back here with volunteers. They were worried about safety. They were worried about masks. Um, they are worried about media coming back here. Um, some uh, agencies, didn't really see the value of me doing it since there wasn't really um, any other projects that had done hermit crab, crustacean survival after spills and things like that. But when I came out here 10 weeks ago and saw this large oil, uh, layer of oil and the hermit crabs crawling up underneath of, beneath it and getting stuck inside of it, I just was like, okay. Well, I called Wildlife and Fisheries and said, can I, can I at least collect hermit crabs since I don't have a federal license to do anything else with other wildlife? They're like, yeah, you can try it, basically. So it's been a very experimental process. We have had birds um, that have uh, had a lot of oil, heavy to moderate oil on them. And we basically called wildlife and fisheries and wait for them to come out and collect the birds. So you don't, if you, if you were to find a bird out here, you don't touch I'm them. not allowed to, right. to get them, right. And how often are, are you and your volunteers out here every day now? Um, we're here about four days a week. And how, when, you, when you have the low tide and you get here, how long are you out here in a, in a spell? Does it depend on the number of people or the number yeah, of crabs? Yeah, it depends on the number of people. If we have fewer people, it takes longer to collect. We try to get at least 500 hermit crabs a day. Um, and then also, 
uh, you know, people who can do more, but have more able crowd. We stay out here longer, collect more hermit crabs. So probably about two hours. Some of them, when we get the, the ones from this area and the heavily uh, oiled ones, we have like a 10% loss overnight and we don't keep them longer than 72 hours because we don't have uh, the supplies to be able to feed them and to change their water and filter for more than that. So we collect usually about 500 hermit crabs a day. Uh, we go back to the center and we use uh, Dr. Bronner's. It's an organic soap. It's a pretty mild degreaser to clean the outside of their shells and the inside of their shells with Q-tips and a solution. It's about a 1 to 10 solution water and soap. Um, and then we repeat that process. And then we put them on an oil absorbent material, kind of like a cotton material that kind of clings to the hairs on their legs and it, it pulls the oil off as they walk around. Um, and then we separate them, small, medium, large, because the large hermit crabs tend to pick on the small hermit crabs, plus it facilitates better shell exchange if they're all around the same size. Um, and then we keep them overnight, change the water, and then relocate them the next day about 20 miles north in less impacted areas. What's the, uh, what's the acreage here or, or the, the, the distance we're looking at in terms of yardage um, or whatever? Well, probably about 10 meters I've gone out and I've seen this oil accumulate um, and probably about 50 meters long. And I want to show you guys one of, I'll have to find it, but one of the pockets, sometimes you have to walk around and look and you can find a pocket of oil. It's pretty gross but interesting.